Hello! Today I am going to present two solo violin pieces, which are both works of Heinrich Wilhelm Ernst. They are none other than the O König and the Last Rose of Summer. I'd like to give a bit of history about these two marvellous works. Underneath all the technical wizardry they have, the main tune and theme of both pieces were originally songs, and both rather well-known songs too. What Ernst has done is that he has practically transcribed the simple and beautiful songs into a maze of virtuosity and truly let them, in a way, live on through the violin. The O König, or in English, the Elf King, is a song written by one of history's greatest songwriters, none other than Franz Schubert. Schubert took the lyrics from Johann Wolfgang von Goethe's poem The O König, and he composed it into a song, the song Ernst has based his version of O König on. Funnily enough, Goethe absolutely detested Schubert's version after hearing it, although, unluckily for him, this song became very popular later on. This song is one that you probably wouldn't want to hear right before going to bed. It depicts a boy and his father riding through a forest at night. Then the boy sees and hears the oaken, a supernatural being trying to lure him away by promising special rewards and beautiful places to go. When the child desperately calls for help from his father, the father doesn't believe in his son, as he cannot see the elfkin. But later on it grows more and more obvious that there is something deeply wrong. At the end, when the father escapes the horrors of the forest to safety, he finds that his son is dead, taken away by the elfkin. What a horror story. The Last Rose of Summer is less traumatic than the O König, but has a similar sense of sadness, as this song is portraying a dying rose. Ernst based it on the poem written by the Irish poet Thomas Moore, who based his poem on the traditional tune Ashlyn and Oifia. This tune has now become similar to a folk song for Irish people and is extremely popular. After much research and much thought, I have made a theory that this poem, which the piece is based on, is actually quite likely an allegory. This is because, at the time Thomas Moore wrote the poem, quite a lot was going on in Ireland. When I was reading some history books about Ireland in my free time a few years ago, I remembered that in 1805 a large battle took place. It wasn't as big as the Battle of Waterloo, that was to come a decade later, but it had a significant impact on Britain, including Ireland. It was none other than the Battle of Trafalgar. Although Ireland is now an independent country, in the 19th century, England was still in control. Over 20% of the sailors that went into the Battle of Trafalgar were Irish, and there were quite a few casualties. Therefore, I think Moore could possibly have based this poem as a dedication and a way for remembering the fallen soldiers. And for me, the last rose represents not just the flower beginning to wither at the end of summer, but also as a soldier. Therefore, as I play it, I don't just think about the virtuosity of the music, I think about the sorrow and the nostalgic sense heard throughout the piece. Even though both pieces have many connections together, they also do have some minor differences. For example, the Oaken is very dramatic and like a thrilling horror movie, whereas The Last Rose of Summer is also quite dramatic, but has a much more nostalgic and even romantic feel to it. Also, it is a set of variations, each one with a different and virtuosic meaning to it. However, it is a bit pathetic to give a presentation without including facts and details about the composer himself. Heinrich Wilhelm Ernst is probably not the most popular name you hear nowadays about classical violinists, let alone musicians. However, interestingly enough, at his time, he was not only well known, he was also extremely respected and admired in the musical circle. Ernst was born in Brno in Czech Republic 
and was a child prodigy. When he was 14 years old, he heard Paganini play in Vienna and this completely changed his life. Paganini became Ernst's idol and Ernst decided to imitate his playing, therefore travelling all over Europe to hear Paganini's concerts. He even went as far as to secretly rent a room opposite Paganini's apartments just so he could listen to him practice. Not so long after, Ernst gave a concert soon after Paganini had, and to the public's surprise, he played Paganini's Nel Corpio Non Mi Sento, which was still unpublished at the time. He'd heard and learned it by heart. Even Paganini was so shocked that when Ernst visited him a few days later, he hid an unfinished manuscript under his bed in haste, exclaiming, I must guard myself not only against your ears, but even against your eyes. Soon, Ernst began his climb to fame. Decades later, he would lead a quartet at the Beethoven Society in London, which included four of the greatest musicians alive at the time, and perhaps four of the greatest musicians that have ever lived. Ernst played first violin, Joseph Joachim, second, Henrik Wieniowski, viola, and Alfredo Piatti, cello. Not only was he one of the greatest musicians at the time, he led the others. Yes, Ernst was not only known as a mere virtuoso, unlike his idol Paganini, but also for his profound interpretations and superb musicianship. Ernst didn't limit himself to violin works, he also did justice to many chamber music pieces, often collaborating with Liszt and Mendelssohn. Fun fact, Mendelssohn and Joachim enjoyed Ernst's Othello fantasy so much that in Mendelssohn's famous violin concerto in E minor, there's one sentence which patterns to a prominent passage in Ernst's Othello fantasy. The Musical World, a renowned British music journal at the time, awarded the title of Paganini's successor to Ernst, as Ernst's play and matched equally or even surpassed his idols, as his pieces had more detailed and advanced variations. Even to this day, not many violinists dare to play some of his pieces due to the outrageous technical challenges. So, although Ernst isn't such a huge name nowadays, he certainly did incredible things for mankind, inventing and exploring new methods of violin techniques, leading a revolutionary quartet, and being a great player and musician.
Thank you.